Parents, what is the most heartbreaking thing your child said to you? After my daughter died, I discovered her secret diary. The day that it happened was like any other. It was a Thursday in early May, one of those perfect spring days where the sun is shining and the air still has a hint of coolness left over from winter. My daughter Shiloh won student of the month at her elementary school for displaying a growth mindset. She was so proud when she came home from school that day, waving her certificate in the air and begging me to put it on the fridge. That was the last day I would see her alive. I remember I wasn't there to pick her up from school because I had to work. I worked as a barista at the local Starbucks and normally I loved my job, but that day was just exhausting. We were understaffed and the afternoon rush seemed to go on forever. All I wanted to do was go home, pour a big glass of wine, and relax. When I finally walked in the door after my shift ended, the house was quiet. Too quiet for an almost seven-year-old. I found Shiloh curled up on the couch with her favorite book. She jumped up when she saw me, so excited to tell me about her day. I listened and exclaimed over her certificate as I heated up leftovers for our dinner. After we ate, I tucked her in with extra snuggles and kisses. She was such an affectionate little girl. As I turned out the light, she said in her sweet voice, Mommy, I want to die and go to heaven. My heart clenched but she had been saying things like that for months. She was very spiritually inclined for a young child and talked often about God, heaven, and angels. I decided we needed to have another discussion about it. Baby girl, you are way too young for that. You'll get to go someday but you still have your whole life ahead of you here. Plus, I need you. I love you so much I couldn't go on without you. She just gave me her dimpled smile and rolled over to go to sleep. If I had known those would be the last words I ever said to her. After tidying up the kitchen, I poured that glass of wine I'd been dreaming of all afternoon and called my best friend. We got caught up in each other's lives while Shiloh slept peacefully down the hall. An hour later, I heard a heavy thud come from her room. I raced in to find her limp body collapsed on the floor, her lips blue. My mom's training kicked in and I immediately started CPR while calling 911. My husband had just gotten home from work and I screamed at him to come help. The next few hours were a blur of panic and adrenaline. The paramedics arrived, rushing her to the hospital, with a flurry of doctors and nurses swarming around her. They did everything they could but she had gone into sudden cardiac arrest and they couldn't revive her. When the doctor finally came out and told us they needed permission to stop resuscitation attempts, I broke down. My little girl, my light, was gone, as I couldn't remember any details of the exact sequence of events after I found her unresponsive. The trauma and grief had muddled my memory. I couldn't recall what her last words to me had been or if I had seen anything concerning her behavior. I spiraled thinking maybe I had missed signs something was wrong. My friend who I had been talking to that night helped me piece together the timeline. She confirmed that Shiloh had seemed just fine when we were on the phone earlier. In the darkest moments of grief, I try to focus on what I do remember about her last day. Her infectious excitement over the certificate, how we snuggled as I read her favorite bedtime story, her little voice saying matter-of-factly that she wanted to die and be in heaven. That was just how she was, an old soul in a little body. She talked frequently about God and angels and not wanting to grow up. She found the earthly world confusing and harsh at times. My sweet, sensitive girl. As I was going through her room yesterday, I came across her old pink diary that she would always write in. I know that I shouldn't have invaded her privacy, but I couldn't resist. I wanted to take in all that I had left of my daughter. I began reading the entries talking about various things. Her first day of school, her new friends, the spaghetti we had last week, leading up to an entry from the night before she died. My heart skipped a beat. I believe she would be comfortable with sharing this paragraph, so this is what she wrote. I think about death sometimes. Not a super amount, but a little bit. My family will miss me, I think. I think it's okay to miss someone, but not too much. Then it makes you sad. Moving on is good. Life is easy when you accept what happens to you. That was all. Just a paragraph. I was wiping my tears before they reached the paper. I was baffled that a girl her age was even capable of thinking of something so complex. I couldn't believe it. I take that entry as her final words to me. I feel that she knew I was going to read that. It brought me closure. It's been two years since she passed, and I have taken her advice. As much as I still miss my Shiloh, I've learned to accept what I cannot control. I'll never stop missing her or fully understand why she was taken from us so soon. But I find peace knowing her pure spirit is at rest in a better place.